Welcome to Silent Symptoms, a Black mental health podcast. I am your host, Katasso Fridge, a Florida-based therapist. This podcast focuses on mental health, stigmas, and social injustices that affect the Black community. This podcast was created to bring awareness about mental health and can be used as an educational guide, but this is not to be used as a replacement for seeking help from a therapist. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi, welcome to Silent Symptoms, a Black Mental Health Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about social media and its effect on mental health because um, we spend a lot of time on social media. We have continued to perpetuate the cycle for a very long time. And although social media has such positive things that it's doing for people, it has created jobs for a lot of individuals and, you know, it has created platforms for people to market themselves as they should. But what has been happening in the recent years, and there has been a lot of research done on how social media is affecting one's mental health. So the first thing that social media affects is someone's self-esteem or self-concept. So when we see people post about their lives, obviously when it's social media, everyone wants to have this perception of their life being perfect. And a lot of times too, as individuals, we see validations from other people. So when we continue to post our lives, we don't show the imperfections or the things that are going wrong in our life. So when somebody else is looking at another person's social media all they see is perfection they see that people are flourishing now we put ourselves on a timeline as to what we need to achieve we're looking at somebody's life from such a false perspective that we continue to look at ourselves and judge ourselves based on other people's successes right so think about when you post on social media as a person do you post things that are happening in your life that are real that are authentic do you post all your arguments do you post all the imperfections do you post all your losses or do you post all your wins all the things that are going right all the praises right because we don't want to put negativity out there about our own lives we show what is really perfect what we've achieved and sometimes we may put a post out there about what we've overcome and although some things may be meant to encourage other people that may turn into something that you know allows somebody to look at themselves and have lower self-esteem so sometimes we put a timeline on ourselves so we look at all our friends our friends are starting their careers they have their own houses they have brand new cars and we're still in the precipice in our life we're at a crossroads trying to figure out where we want to be we're saying we're 27 and why haven't we achieved this and all of our friends are doing it and all these strangers that we follow people we don't know anything about they have all these nice cars all these beautiful houses they have the perfect relationship and we start to have low self-esteem we get to the point where we want to compare our lives we're treating ourselves badly we're judging ourselves we're basing our self-worth on other people's lives on social media and I caution people to be very careful about you know what they look at in social media I always say you know a lot of people don't want to post their negative things and another thing that I have problems with is the whole relationship goals so you know we live at a time where this is a popular time to be in a relationship with people people show off how perfect their relationship is right so a lot of people tend to say oh their relationship is such goals they have an amazing relationship they're always posting videos of themselves happy they're always doing fun things well we need to stop doing that because we don't know what's going on in people's relationships in people's homes because people are not gonna post a full-on argument on social media like who does that Nobody will want you to see the ugly part of the relationship because we all want to be seen in a positive light. So we're not going to go on social media and post how terrible our argument was with our spouse. Well, granted, some people post it on Facebook, but we're not going to sit up there and record an entire argument. So this is why it's important not to look at people's relationships and say that this is what I want. We have to be able to create our own perceptions of what 
our relationship should look like and what our life should look like. Just like some people are graduating from college and we haven't really found our path. It's okay. We have to build our own narrative and create what we want for our own lives because if we seek to see what other people are doing on social media, that creates a problem. Another thing that we have along the lines of self-esteem is fear of missing out. You know, people are accomplishing things. People are doing great things in the community. People are getting, like I said before, new cars, new homes, great relationship, great friendships. They're traveling. They're doing all this amazing stuff, right? And we want to keep up with the Joneses. We're looking at their lives and say, this is so interesting. There was a point in my life when I was posting all my travels, which was really good for me because at the time I was going through things as far as like, you know, like figuring who I was outside of other people. So I did a lot of traveling and and on social media, I was posting all the positive things that were happening in my life. I wasn't posting anything negative because all the negative things weren't meant for the world to see. But when I was having a good time and when I wasn't in a bad moment, I was posting all these great things. And I had people, uh, you know, call me, text me, want to come along on my adventures with me. None of that stuff was fake. However, I wasn't putting out there all the bad things happening in my life that I was trying to get away from because what what is the point right so that created a platform for other people to not want to miss out they wanted to come along on my adventures with me because they saw that I was having a good time but that is the perception I was putting out in the world when I was away from bad situations I was having the best time of my life and sometimes we look at people's lives and want to be in their shoes and we don't know what the heck they have going on and we have to be really careful about what we put out there to the world right And we also have to be careful what we take in because we don't want to end up buying cars that we cannot afford because all of our our friends have brand new cars. We don't want to miss out on that. Our friends are constantly going on trips. We don't want to miss out on that. But we also have to be mindful of where we are in our lives. Are we able to afford those trips? If we are able to afford those trips, don't miss out. Go ahead and go, but don't put yourself in credit card debt or living paycheck to paycheck because you want to keep up with your friends. And, you know, this false perception that people are giving of how perfect life is because life is never perfect, but we're never going to project our losses. And another thing is that there have been studies that have showed that in a In social media, a lot of people have had a spike in anxiety and depression. Now, this is so real. I'm going to have to caution people to really, I want to drive this point home to not internalize other people's lives. We have to limit ourselves on social media and what we allow on our timelines. If we want to, you know, accomplish things that are positive within ourselves and things that are positive within our careers or trying to go down a specific career path, maybe it's not a, it's not good for you to follow people who are posting negative things or things that are false. It's great to follow people who are posting positive quotes on social media, people who are talking about motivating other people to achieve a level of success, things like that, things that uplift someone versus people flashing their money cards and the chicks that they're with or the men that they're with. That's not really realistic. Because life doesn't necessarily always work out that way. We have to always work our way up and not allow things to cause us anxiety and depression. And studies have shown that, you know, if we are asked to stay away from social media an entire day, we are extremely anxious because we feel like we're missing out on something that is happening in the world and we don't want to be away from that. And we're anxious because we also, some of us put out some fake stuff to the world. There are plenty of individuals who are giving others a false perception. So it causes them to be anxious because at the end of the day, if somebody founds 
out that they're a fraud or they're living a life that they're not living, they're anxious. And on the other part of being anxious is that um, we continue to watch people's lives and anxious about what may may happen in our life. We're anxious to see how we can be like them and how we can get in their pockets or how we can flourish. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to take somebody else's blueprint and follow in their footsteps to do something positive. But if we're constantly indulging in those things, hoping it could be us, it really leads us into a, a wave of depression and anxiety. People have literally been depressed because they feel like their lives are supposed to be like other people online. Nine times out of 10, when people eliminate themselves from online, the real world really shakes. Nine times out of 10, people's bodies aren't the same on social media. We have things called filters. Uh, People have the ability to control what they put out in the atmosphere. So that's not really reality. And I also really like people who post on social media and show what they look like on social media and the reality. It kind of shows you that, you know, some people do things to get endorsements. Some people post their bodies a certain way. They have different angles so they could show other people what their life looks like but they don't give them that for real perception of like really my stomach is not really that flat so when I sit down my belly goes over my leggings you know what I mean things like that people never want to show you that but there are other people who are really realistic about the journey and providing that positivity to other people so this is why it's important for us not to compare our lives to other people And what I would also suggest is following people who are aligned with what you need in life, aligned with where you're trying to be and people who you know aren't living a false life, but living a life of positivity. And I, you know, um, have a list of apps for individuals who really struggle with limiting their time on social media. There's a study that has shown that each individual spends about at least two and a half hours per day on social media and their entire lifetime, they would have spent five years on social media. So basically we spend most of our time trying to scroll down to try to figure out somebody else's life and also us putting our lives out there. So there are some apps that help you monitor how long you've been using social media for that specific day and when to cut off and I think that is really neat that they have that available because you know sometimes it is a struggle it's almost like an addiction because we want to see what we're going to do and what somebody else's life is we wake up first thing in the morning is get on the phone I mean get on our phones yes and then get on social media before we even meditate or try to set some type of goal for the day we already on the phone because I'm also guilty of waking up in the morning and going straight to my phone instead of trying to center myself and trying to set the tone for my day because looking at somebody else's life on social media doesn't really help me you know set my tone for the day unless I'm listening to a motivational speech So some of the apps that you can use to limit your social media use, um, there's one called Social Fever and it's a well-designed Android app that really helps you with trying to figure out how much time you've used on social media. So it has a time limit on it. It tracks you, it helps you track um, how much time you've been on social media And it helps you basically see what your maximum use was, your minimum use was, and it's really easy to use. Another one is space, break phone addiction. So this one basically disconnects you from your device during your off time. So it is basically cutting you off and telling you, hey, you've been on social media all day. You're off. It's time for you to enjoy your day. The third one is app detox. So basically what it does, um, it allows you to decide when you break your own rules. So it also helps helps with parental control, um, how much your kids have on the screen time. So it really limits you on your apps. So it can help you lock that social media app. So if you on Facebook too much, Instagram too much, it just helps you lock it out and you control how much time you have on social media. So another one called 
off time. So this one is really different from the other ones. So you can set up auto replies to people. You could block the calls or and it's, it allows them to get notifications when you're offline. And it really lets them know that you're not available to talk right now and also tracks how much you use. Another one is called my ad. Dictometer. So basically, it tracks your addiction to see if you're addicted to social media. It helps you track your monthly, your daily, your weekly use for social media. And it helps you show your timeline of what you've been doing as far as social media. And it shows you your progress if you've increased in the use of social media or if you decreased. Another one is called quality time. So with quality time, it limits your social media use like the other ones. And you can create different quality time profiles to uh, customize according to your needs or requirements. So if you want to set up a time of two hours on social media per day, it'll allow you to customize that to your specific needs. OK, another one is called moment. So this specific one um. It gives you detailed information about how many times a day you pick up your smartphone, including how much time you spend on this app, on each app. So this is really neat to me because I feel like sometimes we don't know how many times or how many hours we pick up our phones. We spend so much time on our phones and we're so distracted and we're not paying attention to the things that we're supposed to be doing. So another one is Forest. This is the one that a lot of people have been talking about. So what it does, it monitors your your social media usage. And if you continue to use your phone, then your plant really dies. So you're supposed to nurture it by not using social media. And if you constantly use it, your plant dies. So I think that's a neat concept. Another one is called antisocial media. So this one is really user friendly. It only reports data on your daily consumptions and it's really easy to use and it's ad free. So you don't have to worry about having pop ups during your you know, tracking or looking through the app to see how much you have used. It seems like a lot of these are really similar and they pretty much show you like how much you use and how to limit yourself. And the last one is Realize D. So this one is really, really easy, just like the other ones. It allows you to set limits on your screen time and um, it uh, uh, allows you to text friends and family members at no cost. So you can like basically control not just social media, but like how you use your phone on a daily basis. If you're constantly on your phone, texting people, calling people on social media, it helps you realize what you're doing and attracts all that usage. So with this being said, I know that I was rambling on for that last couple because I was trying to read through to see how beneficial these apps are. And, you know, you don't have to pick all of them because all of them are pretty much similar. So you have to see what works best for you and then look at the ratings and see if it's available on Apple or Android. So you get to have that choice. And I think that these apps are really helpful because what you don't know is what you don't know. So if you have an app that's tracking how much social media time you have, it allows you to evaluate if you're spending like four hours a day on social media. That's really, really, really a lot of time on something that's really not helpful. If you're working on social media, making connections and doing the things that you need to do to advance yourself, that's a different story. However, we don't have to forget about the portion of self-care. So please be mindful of your mental health and how it affects you and how you're comparing your life to other people. No one more going to walking on this earth is perfect so we have to remember that you know I always say perfection is mediocre because nobody in this world is perfect but somebody that tries is always the greatest so if you try to limit yourself on social media and not compare yourself and don't feel the pressure of social media because other people are doing so great on social media the perception is amazing trust me not everybody is doing the greatest so and we are all where we're supposed to be in life so if somebody is really doing great on social media they doing all the things that they wanted to do in life they're reaching their goals that may not be your time yet your time is coming or you're in the opposite you know side you're achieving that somebody else is looking at your life and seeing how you want to get there and I always say okay if you're going to use social media use it positively use it to where you're able to make connections with people and work but also create your own 
a place where if social media does go down tomorrow, you still have leverage of how you're going to secure your future. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. You can catch us on Anchor and all your favorite media streams. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Silent Symptoms Podcast. Let us know if you have any feedback or topics that you would like to hear. 